Hello and welcome to the next video. In this video I will show you how the Material BI Dashboard plugin is working in the background. So we go into Page Designer. Um, here is the page one that we can see here. And we have here the Oracle Apex region, um, the plugin. It has a SQL source. Um, it's really short because um, all of the logic is in a package. Um, but you can just add a normal SQL query. The only thing that is really, really special here in, in, in this region is um, you have to put JSON into the, into the region and not just um, SQL. Um, this JSON looks like this. Here you have an example, example with tables. Um, it supports page items to submit. You have the escape special characters attribute and you have normal plugin attributes. Um, let's check them out. Um, why I chose JSON? The problem is each of the dashboard items have many different ways um, to, 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 to set options. For example, the charts, you can set over 40 options. Um, and when I would not use JSON, only a SQL source, then each of these um, options um, needs to be set by a column. And when you have all these items, then it would, um, then you would use hundreds of columns. And so I switched to JSON because it makes it much more flexible. And in the SQL source, um, just one column is returned and that is a JSON blob. And this JSON you can directly create into uh, the SQL source or how I do that in a package. And also the configuration is in JSON because here you can see there are so many things um, that you can set also here, the other item types, um, it, it's not possible to make this declaratively because I would need so much attributes. Um, this is too much for, for, for Oracle Apex. And the next thing is um, JSON um, is um, really easy to change and you can really easy copy from page to page. So maybe the declarative thing is not the best option for such large plugins. Um, every um, source that can be set in, in, in the, the dashboard is um, has a help. You just need to, to click here on help, then you get an example and an explanation for each JSON attribute. Um, this config JSON is for the whole dashboard plugin. You can set a default call span. Um, it's so you have 12 columns here in the width and you can set, okay, one item has a default call span of one, two, four, up to 12. You can set here um, if it's sortable. So if it's draggable here in the start or not, this is set. And you can set the default height of the items. The, if the dashboard should refresh after five or 10 seconds and many other options um, for, for background, for the options link, for title and so on. Then here we have the data loading mechanism. Um, in default, you can use synchronous data loading. That means when you refresh the page, then everything is loaded synchron, but there's also an asynchronous mode. And you can see it when I here refresh that, then these items, the charts and the calendar um, takes a little longer to load data um, because there's a little bit more data than just here on these KPI cards and it's load asynchronously. So the dashboard is rendered and after it's rendered, it, it loads the data for these items. And that is pretty cool because um, the dashboard can load. And when you have items that takes a little bit longer, then you can use easily the asynchronous mode and for the end user, it's a much more better experience. And 
here is a PL SQL block. And here you do, do load the, the asynchronous data. It's just also my call get dashboard, like in the SQL source, but loading mode is now asynchronous. Then we can activate the features that we want to use in the dashboard. Um, when you deactivate here this, then you can see um, the config JSON for this item type is, is disabled or not shown. And here we have also the JSON configurations for um, the other types that you use in, in the dashboard. The cool thing is these are just the defaults. You can everything overwrite also in SQL. So it's you can do all that here on runtime in SQL. So each item can have a different uh, configuration. But when you have um, the configuration for all, for example, when you have a chart and you want to have all charts with a legend, then you can set it here in the default configuration. Here's also the PL SQL blocks for different items. Here, for example, the PL SQL block for saving the short notes and so on. Yes. Um, this dashboard has also some dynamic actions that is fired. Um, we create here a new one and then we can see here um, there are some events that can be used from the uh, material dashboard. Um, the first one is item sort stopped. So um, that is fired when, when, when you stop this, the drag and drop. The next one is um, when it's refreshed, when it's rendered, and short note saved. So you can um, get this short, an event when the short note is saved, and then you can do something. Um, you can refresh a report or whatever you want. So, and when we go back here on the start in our SQL source, then you see we just call a package. And now we want to take a look into this package. Um, we call the, the package dashboard management. It has some different uh, functions and procedures. Um, there is this get dashboard function. This function calls all sub functions that produces the blob for rendering the dashboard. And we have functions for adding a dashboard item, edit a dashboard item and deleting. And these are called when we uh, click here on the link, then a normal Apex dialog um, opens. And here um, it's called with Apex tools, um, the save, delete, and so on. So this is not a dashboard feature. Um, I just use a model dialog of Apex and call there the configuration. And we have the store new item order. We can check it out on the page. It's called here. Um, I made it like this that um, I need to press here this button again to save. So when I just um, reordered and don't want to, to, to make it um, um, solid safe, um, then I just can skip that. But when I press here, save, then just this new item order is saved. And the item order I stored on an item um, that we can see here. I have here a uh, dynamic action, Apex material dashboard, item sort stopped. And then I used here set value, JavaScript expression, this data, and set this on an item. And every time when I um, reorder here an item in the dashboard, um, the new order list of item idents, because um, each of these items has an ident, is stored onto this item. And this list um, I just sent when pressing here and save to the package and store a save stat. Okay, let's go into the body. Um, here we have the function get dashboard, and this function just creates a JSON structure. 
Um, this JSON structure looks like this. Here we have an example. Um, it's a JSON with um, a node um, items and inside of items there's an array. And each sub-JSON in this item array is one dashboard item. And every item has nearly the same structure. Um, it has here the item type, the title, the back color, the call span, it's, uh, this call span is the width, um, the height, and the item data. So easy is that. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. So yes, you have to work with JSON when you want to use this plugin, but um, JSON is not so heavy. And uh, creating JSON in, in, in SQL is not so hard, so it's really easy. And we can see it here in the package. Um, I just have here in select, and in this select, um, I create um, a JSON object with an item ID. Um, each item has an ID that is important for reordering and when we want to call asynchronous data because I need to tell the package procedure, um, hello, um, I'm item number one, I am a calendar, please give me my data. Then we have here some other options. Um, important is that when you want to use asynchronous load, then you need to tell, okay, this item here needs to load his data async, and then the material um, BI dashboard plugin starts to, to, to loading the data. Um, I made it like this, that I said, okay, when it's a chart or a calendar, then please um, get data async for all others, um, please to sync. Um, as you can see here, I also could make this one true for Mad JSON. Um, but um, to make it a little bit easier in, in SQL, you can also work here in SQL with 1 and 0. This is not working here in, in that JSON structures. Um, but in SQL it works. Um, but you can also use a true or false. This is up to you. So then here um, are these option links. Um, I told you that these option links just uh, go into a normal Apex um, dialog and there I make the configuration for the dashboard. Um, then I need to, to, to get the item configuration. I wrote here uh, another function that, that creates the blob for this configuration and another function to, to get these item data. And I have a table where I store my, my items. So every time when I change here something on the dashboard, um, it's stored into this table. For example, when I add a new item and I just um, have multiple dashboard items and these dashboard items um, it's just given into the function and then he knows which dashboard I want to have. So um, you can make multiple dashboards on one page. For example, you make here a select list or radio group and then you can switch really quickly between the dashboards. You just need to switch the dashboard item. Okay, let's go into this get item data. This is in another package, um, package dashboard item data. And here we can see these two functions, get item config, get item data. And in this package, we need to move a little bit down. Here we have the function get item data. And when here in the start, there is a case. And I said to you, um, when it's a chart or a calendar, then I just, um, I want to load the data asynchronously. So when page loading mode is synchronous and it's chart then, just return null and else call subfunctions. And in these subfunctions, the, the JSON for the items are produced. And 
in this package that you also can download with the sample app. It's everything included. Um, here are every types that the dashboard supports um, are here documented, what they can do, all options. For example, the HTML item. You have here the JSON structure. You see um, which values are needed. Um, here is it really easy. It's just HTML and duration. Everything here is commented. And the same is also for larger objects like the charts. Um, you see here um, the chart configuration. Here are so many options, but all of these um, attributes are documented. So you can play around with it and get a feeling with the dashboard. Um, but this is the ground structure, how the dashboard works. You just produce a JSON. In the JSON is the configuration of each item and maybe the data of each item. And when you want to load data asynchronously, the data is left. You just need to add the configuration and then the dashboard is rendering. So you see, I use JSON, but it's not so hard to get it work. So have fun with the plugin.